Hey guys, let me warn you up front. I just finished watching season two about 30 seconds ago. Season three starts in T minus three hours and 20 minutes. I'm gonna try to throw together a season two recap as fast as I can, so please don't expect much. There will be major season two spoilers, so close out now if you haven't seen the show. And if you haven't seen it, watch it. It's one of the best shows to ever hit telly. Last spoiler warning, five, four. Season two opened with the cave woman scene. Then we were introduced to the new town, Jordan, Texas. Jarden is inside a national park called Miracle, since no one from Jarden disappeared during the departure. We meet a new family, the Murphys, with John, Michael, Erica, and Evie. Kevin, Nora, Jill, and Lily move in next door, and Evie and two friends seem to go missing, but it's pretty fishy since they had to run around the woods naked earlier in the episode, probably trying to spread their scent everywhere before their fake departure to make it more difficult for any search party to find them. In episode two, we go back in time a little bit to Mapleton, New York, Kevin is feeling guilty about Patty's death in season one. He unburies her body and purposely speeds past the cop, but he ends up getting let go after saying that she committed suicide. Nora sells her house to MIT students who want to study it and uses that money to purchase a new house in Jarden, Texas, which we saw in episode one. Kevin is being haunted by what appears to be a ghost of Patty, and at the end of the episode, we see him at the bottom of the lake with a cinder block tied around his ankle. We find out in the season finale that he had tried to commit suicide, but there was an earthquake that caused the water to drain out before he died. Episode 3 focused on Tom and Lori back in Mapleton, New York. Lori has created a support group for people who leave the Guilty Remnant, and Tom pretends to be in the Guilty Remnant in order to secretly convince people to leave it. They get evicted from their home, Lori enters her landlord's home to get back her computer, then she intentionally runs over some Guilty Remnant members in her getaway. Lori then meets with a book publisher about publishing her story. He's kind of a douchebag, so she ends up freaking out and attacking him. Oh yeah, and Tom is the new Holy Wayne. There's a bunch of craziness in episode 4, but a key takeaway is that Matt claims that Mary woke up when they first arrived to Jarden, and they hopped on the good foot and did the bad thing, if you know what I mean. But then she relapses, so when they find out she's pregnant in episode 5, it's kind of awkward, because people think that Matt raped her, since she can't really give consent. And lastly, Nora starts handcuffing Kevin at night so that he doesn't sleepwalk. In episode 6, a new theory pops up. The theory is that some people are lenses, meaning that they were a factor in people around them disappearing. The way these people address it to Nora is very callous. Remember, she lost her entire family. It's heartbreaking to see this. Nora obviously feels terrible, and Carrie Coon delivers a stellar performance as always. Kevin tells Nora about Patty, but considering what Nora was going through, it probably wasn't the best timing. The next morning, Nora, Mary, and the baby are gone. Lori arrives at the board of the town in a panic looking for Tom, who is now MIA. Kevin meets her at a motel, tells her about Patty, and then they head back to his house where Jill and Lori have an awkward hello. Kevin gets a call from Nora, asks if she will believe him if he gets fixed. She says yes, so then he runs off to go see Virgil. Virgil has him drink poison so that he can confront Patty in death. Virgil was supposed to inject Kevin with epinephrine adrenaline after a few minutes and then bring him back to life, but instead, Virgil commits suicide. Michael arrives in the nick of time and drags Kevin outside and then buries him. Episode 8 was a legendary international assassin episode and focused on Kevin trying to kill Patty in this realm which is sort of between life and death. An interesting takeaway from this one is that the dude on the bridge whispered something to him, but we didn't get to hear what he said. Episode 9 starts tying together some of the loose ends of this season. We get a flashback of Meg visiting Jarden and looking for answers. While she is there, she runs into Evie, and then we jump to the present time and Meg is clearly planning something for the finale. Tom opens a door and finds Evie and her friends hiding in a trailer. There wasn't a second departure after all. Shocking. Episode 10, the finale. There's another earthquake and then Mary wakes up again as she remembers having sex with Matt. Whew. So my man Matt is not a creep. Meg and co arrive at Jordan with some bad intentions. She tells the officer at the checkpoint that her trailer is full of explosives then drives it out onto the bridge. We jump over to the kennel. John and Kevin bump into each other. Kevin tells John how he knows Evie didn't disappear because he saw her the day he tried committing suicide. John's mind starts racing. He freaks out. He asks why Evie would do that if she loves her family, and Kevin wisely says, well, maybe she didn't. Love you guys. Dude, Kevin, really? But John overreacts a little bit. He shoots Kevin in the stomach. Cops are preoccupied, though, running off to the scene of the bridge with Meg. Violins are playing. It's totally insane. Par on the course for this show. John sprints to the bridge, and guess who he sees? Evie and the girl standing on the bridge smoking cigarettes and holding a sign that says, One Hour. Everyone figures that it means they'll blow up the bridge in one hour, and the people rejoice. Michael and Eric are in church. Michael starts telling a story about him and Evie in a bathtub that's overflowing. John busts in, and then they all sprint to the bridge together. Erica gets past the cops and practically tackles her daughter in happiness, only to find out that Evie has a killer poker face. She won't even make eye contact with her mom. 
Some crazy girl starts yelling to Nora that it's not her baby. Nora looks at her and says, Will you shut the up? Turns out a lot of the crowd are guilty remnant members. The crazy chick steals Lily. Nora chases. Phenomenally filmed. The baby's on the ground. It's like Lion King on steroids. Nora protects the baby. Time is up and the bridge is doing what it does best. It cuts to a screen of all white, but we're not done yet. 20 minutes left. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Final season, season three. Episode one in T minus four. Three and, a, three, and a half, three and a half hours. I killed you. Oh man, another earthquake. Theme song. Hey, Jill. Hey, Lori. What's up, Matt, Mary? Hey, guys. Wow, Tom. Tom and Lily. Tom's holding Lily. Nora. Is that it? Wow, what a show.